that's how it all goes down. Fat little kid from Bridgeton Town. Blessed with a vibe the world should know. Channel 4 said he's a G and should have his own show. Off come scared what a G might say. Brought man like Mo to ride the wave. No kinky thing on TV, no way. Rastafari stands alone. Jaja City. Hello, baby. Hello, baby. Hi. Hello, baby. Hello, baby. Hello, baby. Hello, baby. Hello. Hello, baby. Hi. Hello. Ahoy, child. Me, how? My job. Child. Who are the dogs? Get it, you up. It is going down. Down. Generals, you know. Well, go on, Mr. Lord Neville. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Boom. Big Nasty Show's been nominated for a BAFTA award. Yeah! You get me? Now, this why it's so powerful, yeah? And two things. First thing, I ain't a Ross Clark comedian. I'm just a real guy on TV. <laughs> so, the fact that I'm even in this position, I give God thanks highly. But, I give the public a major thank you. Because without you guys, nothing would be going in. So God bless all of you. The award is for all of us. You hear me? Boom. Let's welcome and make some noise for my main side dish, Mad Light Mo Gilligan! How are you doing? How are you keeping, bro? What? Another chain? Yeah, Jewel of the Strut. This is fresh today, you know? Like, now, what are you going to wear to the BAFTAs? Because when we went to the RTS, you was wearing this, but in navy blue. You know what I mean? you got to get a suit, bro. I'm going to do the chillest thing they've ever seen in their life. Yeah. Yeah? I'm going to wear, yeah? Air Force Ones. <laughs> yeah? I'm going to roll up one trouser leg. <laughs> yeah? They might even get a hoodie or something. Mm. And a fisherman's hat. Yeah. And no, because it's the BAFTAs. Yeah, big BAFTAs, the BAFTAs, you know? Yeah, because it's the BAFTAs. The BAFTAs. Give me a close up on the camera. <laughs> I'm going to wear nine chains. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get on with the show! <laughs> okay, it's the big nasty show tonight. tonight. It's a major vibe. Vibe. We got the old school general man like Ian Wright. Ian Wright. I am on the doorway to fame. Fame. This guy's from Canada. Bring in Tory Lane. Tory Lane. Gus Khan, Little Sims, Little Tim Sims. Westwood. Good. And you don't know, my voice is hello, hi. When the cupboards flush, I'm gonna have a special guest. And he is a Ross Clark G. His name is Stephen Fry. Please welcome to the stage, Stephen Fry! Thank you. Where would you like me to sit? Pleasure, nice Stephen. You okay? Nice Lovely to meet, to meet you. Have Very a seat, nice man. Nice to see you. Hello, everybody. Have a seat. Oh. Guys, please get up for comedian Stephen Fry. Oh. Thank you very, very much. How kind you are. Hey, TV makes you look short. You're fucking tall, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> and I'm <laughs> fucking fat as well. <laughs> gang, gang, gang. Yes, yeah, but your room is completely square, whereas I'm sort of more of an oblong. Right? <laughs> <laughs> See, oblong, you know, I heard that word in Yonkers. <laughs> <laughs> Real talk. But well, hey, now, let's get to the nitty gritty now, yes. yeah? Boom. Hell, I'm trying to see. You come off Mr. Im... Uh, yes, hello, to do, to do. No, I wouldn't do none of that. No, not me. But you're a Ross Clark rebel blood. You, you was all in jail. Yes, I, I was in jail. Free the bros, yes, yeah? I know. Doing stuff. I, I yeah? was a, a turbulent and troubled teen, uh, uh, Mr. Nasty, I'll be honest with you. He was expressing yourself. I went on a kind of borrowed... Credit card spree. What jail did you go? The jail was called Puckle Church, which sounds Puckle like Church? a. It sounds, it sounds so lovely. It sounds like they played tennis. Actually, it was, I think it was closed <laughs> down because it was a violent place. Uh, when I was there, it was a young offenders institution. Okay. Um, and because I, I was young, I was 17, 18. Do you mind me asking, what was the most. Like, because you went for fraud. So, like, mm. was it just an accumulation of fraud or was it like a big purchase from. I, I had stolen fraud? these credit cards and I'd gone all over England, uh, mm. staying in hotels. Buying suits. Talented Mr. Clothes. Ripley. Basically. <laughs> My that's very right, actually. Come on. Uh, unfortunately, I got away without actual jail time, but I was there for 
oh, a month or so because I was on remand. Um, mm, but great track. I'd been at a boarding school since the age of seven, so prison was a breeze. <laughs> an absolute breeze. Whoa, you moving like a Nigerian? Yeah. You're doing fraud. I was so. Whoa, I'm nothing, you know. <laughs> Just because. It's cool, you all are cuz. You know what I mean, then? I don't want to cuz. I did me something. I fucked the show cuz. Who did this for the mandem, yeah? My, my biggest viewers, yeah. Mandem is. Yeah. Now, there's a word I Oh, mandem. Mandem. Yeah, yeah. mandem. What, yeah? It was... it's, it's for the guys, yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> meaning, meaning the gentlemen. <laughs> Oh, yeah? I see. Right. We're yeah. going to do this one for the gentlemen. Oh, yeah? in Mandem. What, 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 what? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> so the highest rated of a show, yeah, this is the most watched thing in all the prisons, yeah? I beg you, look into camera two, yeah, and say, yeah. free the bros. Oh, this is for the Mandem. Yeah. Uh, oh. This is for the Mandem. Um, yeah. Free the bros. Free the bros. And bang your doors. And bang your doors, gentlemen and of the Mandem. bang your doors. <laughs> Not on Wednesday. But we, we can't free all of the Mandem. Some of them... <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> I heard, yeah, yeah, that you got a potty mouth like me. Uh, yes, I like swearing. I think swearing is very important. Sometimes oh. you got to load up the swear words, though. Oh, yes. Yeah. Because I mean, I... there's some words I don't use, but when I'm really angry, you ever load up a word? Like, like, pussy -o. You know when you get the lips? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know when you get the lips like that? You're like, you no, you pussy -o, bro. <laughs> Time is is because always in frustration, isn't it? Yeah. That's that's the best time. You know, back in the day we had a nineties car. Because now you got cars here. Yeah, you dick ass. It's, it's yeah. not the same. <laughs> no, but nineties no. car, you like. Yeah. Post <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, you got to load up the words, man. You're right. Yeah. Absolutely right. You ever yeah. said that word before? So, never. But there are some vocabulary. <laughs> some words are used in popular in popular everyday speech without people knowing that they're actually swear words. OK. Uh, and an example would be poppycock. <laughs> poppycock, yeah. you know? It's, no. Oh, that is mad middle class, though. It's hey, not... Oh, shut up, you poppycock! But... <laughs> poppycock. It, it actually means something. It means... What does it's it from mean? the Dutch, papa cuck. It means uh -uh. soft shit. Whoa. Whoa. Papa cuck. And we turned it into poppycock as if it's the lightest, as you say, yeah. most middle class thing for uh, nonsense. Oh, what poppycock? But actually, it means. What do you mean I can't get my waitress points? What a poppycock! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> poppycock. exactly. <laughs> okay. You're well, very nice makeup girls in the. In the uh, um, one of them Steve had. Stephen, you're a pre. One of them had. <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, had to say to one of them that I could smell her panini across the room. Whoa! 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 You're, you're cheesing out the gallum's crushes on TV. <laughs> <laughs> hey, only my show. Only on my show. So hold on, you're trying to say she had the cheesy thing. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Raw. Yeah. That's, that's a bad... That's so a bad... So apparently, in an Italian word for a flat sandwich can somehow, in the wrong context, sound indescribably rude. A very good Shakespearean <laughs> one that has such good rhythm that it still, oh, still sounds good. Oh, God, I didn't even know what is, to say. Is to say to someone, you bastard son of a mongrel bitch. Whoa! <laughs> That's Shakespeare. Uh -huh. Isn't that a good one? You bastard son of a mongrel bitch. Yeah, I it did. just comes off the tongue. I got, there's only one thing I got can beat that. My mum's one because you're fierce fear of a pussy and a tear up dress. <laughs> oh dear. Bit, bit. Oh. I, I, I ain't gonna lie, yeah. Ah. I don't know what he said, but it sounded mad. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to know. My mother is watching this show. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I didn't even catch what he said, but you know what word is about when a man goes, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> I heard, yeah, you also like to powder your nose and that. You're, you're... Oh dear, yes, I did have a terrible time. This is it. Hey, Mum, uh, yeah. yeah? I don't believe in any of that stuff. I was putting bunning cancers, yeah? But one thing I've got to rate your thing. Mm. You was doing lines in Buckingham Palace. Yeah. yeah. Do you know how gas that is? You know lines in Buckingham yeah. Palace? I, I, I'm not, it's not something I'm proud of. And I, it was foolish of me. In, in one of my volumes of autobiography, I, I thought I, I wanted to explain what an addiction or a dependency like cocaine addiction is like in as much as wherever you are, you just have to have it on you. And, and the I'm The Queen not is here, watching this losing her shit, I'm not shit, here bro. to be... <laughs> what the fuck 
really do. I <laughs> know, absolutely. <laughs> and she'd be right. But so would people whose bathrooms I did it in who were not the Queen. Who, who else? You're, well, everybody, everywhere I went. Go on, jump another name, go on. No, go on. <laughs> Houses of Parliament. Oh, uh, shit! Houses of yeah. Parliament! I tell you, that oh, was... Oh, shit! That was the weirdest <laughs> one, because I was having lunch with a member Man of Parliament. Man is gurning in the House of Parliament, not the letters <laughs> of the chunk! No, but it was worse than that, because usually, you see, hey, usually you go into the men's lavatory, and there's a, there's a sit-down one, and you go in and you chop up on the seat or on the cistern or somewhere you can, or you take out a, a phone or whatever it is. But it, I was having lunch with this Member of Parliament. I said, where's the men's room? And he pointed me around the corner. I went in, and as I went in, I realised it was a... It was a, a urination place only. There were only stand-up stalls. There were no... So there was a little piece of porcelain just along with, the, you know, the bits where you stand that are separated like that. So I started chopping up on this. Uh, and then two MPs came in. <laughs> so I was putting my hand over it like that and just sort of pretending to pee. And they were chatting to me because they... So what are you doing here? And I said, oh, just uh, having lunch with... <laughs> whoever the... I bet you was fuming it. Fuck off, you hobby cock. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, listen, I... But, I, you know, I regret it in as much as there were many years where I think, damn, I could have sort of worked harder instead of going to bed at four and lying there wide-eyed and drippy-nosed for two hours before I could get to sleep. But I, through, through my 20s and 30s, it, it, this bipolar disorder in, in my brain was getting worse and worse. Mm -hmm. Now, if for some, char some reason you find yourself getting depressed for no reason and you haven't been diagnosed with a mental illness, the natural thing is to reach out to something that will numb any pain you feel. Of course, in the end, they just pile up the biggest K-hole, the biggest crash you could ever come to, and you have to face the fact that it's actually something inside you that needs to be addressed, something serious, and, and the drugs are getting in the way of it. But I, but I, I do think, in the case of things like uh, cannabis, it's absurd that it's, that it's criminalised. Absolutely, it's madness. Absolute madness. <laughs> But now, Stephen, you've been on a lot of stuff like uh, Black Adder and yes. QI as well. Yes. Uh, you also narrated uh, some of the Harry Potter novels as well. Yes, I did, yes. yes All so of what, them, yes. So, so like, the people like, often recognise you in the most like, randomest of places because of your voice and stuff. Yes. You've got a very recognisable voice. A whole generation since the books came out, uh, some of them have listened to them, and a, a man not long ago pointed at me across the street and shouted, mm. My children, go to bed with you! <laughs> and I said, no. Can you put it another way? You've got a mad relaxing voice still. It's like, I could, if you, imagine if he was getting pulled over by a feds and I said, rock us. I'm just looking at five cars. What am I going to do with this thing here? <laughs> and he just came out in the air like, it's OK. Just tell them it's OK. It's a misunderstanding. There's going to be nothing wrong. You've got a very convincing voice. Well, thank you. I think I thank you. Um, it might suggest that I'm a bit unreliable or that I could persuade you of something that wasn't true and I wouldn't want it. But it will sound true because the way you're saying it, like, tell me a lie that is, right now, that's the actual lie. <laughs> I think, don't you actually, that despite what you read, Brexit is going really well. I'm so fucking dumb, I was like, wait, wait, what's it doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> what was your first TV appearance? Well, my very first TV appearance was a university challenge, I'm embarrassed to say. Oh, no, no! <laughs> oh, snap, that's oh, old school! Look, wasn't I thin? This is, this is you, yeah? That, that you is there. I, okay. yes, there we are. We, we were just past the worst hair period in British history, but it was still pretty grim. What, what year is this? Uh, this would be 1980, I guess, 79 or okay. 80, something like that. You look smart, though. You always kept well, you have a crazy though. IQ, innit? Well, reasonable, I think, yes. Yes, quite high. I heard that you could have been, like, in Mensa and stuff. Yeah, yes, I did when I was a teenager, as we know. So what's Typically... it like in Mensa? What's the chicks like in there? <laughs> Come on, you know me, you'd never get to Mensa more. I, yes, well... I mean, you're asking the wrong man, I'm afraid. Uh, that, that particular avenue of, uh, of sexual exploration was closed off to me by birth. People argue about when people discover that they're gay, and my... My line is always that uh, it was actually at birth. When, uh, uh, as I dropped out of my mother, I looked back up and said, that's the last time I'm going up one of those. <laughs> and, I, and I kept to it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but Mensa is... I, I mean, it's very silly. The, the fact is... Hey, all... you're a sick mother! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you go and read it? That was so gassed. <laughs> <laughs> that was so gassed. <laughs> How has TV changed since that time? Because that is... That's like, how, what, what year well, was I that? Well, I tell you, we, we were in this studio, this very studio, doing Black Adder. That, that was 1980, as I say, but a bit later, I did 
my first thing after university, I was in this comedy club at university with mm. my friend Hugh Laurie and Emma Thompson, uh, also the actress. We, we're all at university together. And we, this is oh, it. there we are. Good this heavens. That's me on the right, looking smug as always. So, yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> television then was very different. We, we did back out of here, and the next... It was on a Sunday, mm -hmm. and uh, in the next studio, they used to do um, Only Fools and Horses. Oh, and, yeah, and what? We used, to, we used to meet in the, uh, in, in the tea bar and moan about our audiences, because in those days, audiences were awful. Unlike here, where they're almost uniformly attractive, intelligent, alert, perceptive, <laughs> and <laughs> laughing all the time, yes. And, and, uh... <laughs> but Stephen, you lived yes, an amazing sir. life. You're an massively intelligent guy, so it's time for your ghetto story. Run oh, yeah! Please. It's a survival story. Story! Oh, yeah. Ghetto story. Bring a story. This is my story. Story. Get a story. Boom. Hey, hey, pipe smoker the year 2003. Three. Black either jeans, Worcester made a whole lot of pee. Three. On the roads like the Africa, food was your thing. Three mums hold it down, blood, ride in the wing. True guy hit show, could chew to the eye. Booyaka, booyaka, make some noise for Stephen Fry. Right. Only man to bang some sniffing but in the palace. Hey. My G is getting spaceship eye. Make some noise for a real true guy. guy. Booyaka, booyaka, make some noise for Stephen Fry. Fry. Stephen Fry. Fry. Inside. Fry. 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 Busty flip if you want to just flip. Hey. Busty flip if you want to just flip. Hey. Busty flip if you want to just flip. Hey. Hey. See you after the break. Well, we'll be joined by Ian Wright. Tweet us and don't forget to use the hashtag the Nasty show. See you in a bit. Hey. <laughs> Welcome back, welcome back. The cupboard is lighting up now, so that means we've got a guest who's gonna join us on the couch. Let's see who's coming out of the cupboard. It's you and Ryan! Guys, please give it up for football legend Ian Ray! Ian Ray! How are you feeling, though, Ian? I'm you good. Okay? Yeah, I'm really good, man. I'm like, yeah? yeah, it's brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. I feel fantastic right now. I've got to say, though, I was in the, in the room and I noticed a couple of cans, but seriously, man, there's literally only two cans of drink in my fridge, bro. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. What, you never know yet? I didn't have nothing in there. Yeah. What do you drink? We'll get it for you. You're Ian Wright. Vodka and tonic. Yeah? Can I have a vodka and tonic for Mr. Ian Wright, please? <laughs> They're gonna get it, you know, there's one runner. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's running down the aisles like this. I can't get the drink, I can't get the drink. <laughs> but fam, you said the levels as a black anyway, player, because, yeah, yeah you won bare stuff, more 300 goals. There's every time in the, in the football pitch, you know, every black kid wanted to be Ian Wright. Yeah. You know How the many ones years there, in a row were you the top scorer? Six. What? Oops, so no, just just the goal. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I just say, though, seriously? I see you trying to not let him smile. He's like, six. <laughs> 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 Who's the best player you played with? Dennis Burke. Yeah. The you floater, you know? Yeah. He's a... Oh. Burkham, I've you, never seen anything like You guys shared like. a room as well? We awesome. shared a room, yeah. I remember the first time um, we, we shared a room together, that's first night. And I remember he disappeared into the bathroom. You know what I mean? I'm sitting there in just my, my vest. Man came out the bathroom in full pyjamas and slippers. Aww. <laughs> 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 full pyjamas and slippers. With and the you know what? bear? Well, no, they weren't no teddy bear, Steve, oh. but what he kind of said to me is that this guy's about um, how, how he carries himself and yeah. how he's prepared and how he's ready. So the next week I went to... German streets, Yasser and Turnbull, the best pyjama place. <laughs> best pyjama place in London, in German street. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like yeah. silk stuff, yeah. Hey, man, I got a pair, I got, I, I must have bought about seven pairs of pyjamas. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, it, so what happened was, is that, so the next week when I went in and I came out, he said, yes. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so the week after, so then in the end, we ended up, both of us had about, I think, 40 pairs of pyjamas, cos <laughs> we're going to the bathroom, come out and see what a man's wearing. It. Yeah. <laughs> Drinking, you know? Hey, where's the vodka tonic for my G? Hey, Come nice on. Nice one, Nick. Thanks. Cheers. Oh, Classy. Well oh, done. Well. You see, like, your era of football, I think it was, like, I'd say the last era of football where it seemed, it seemed like you guys were still having fun. It's not as fun yeah. now. I think, especially me as a young black boy growing up, 
watching this footballer and I'm like, right, this guy's really expressing himself. He's really like, he's laughing, he's always celebrating his goals and he had the gold tooth as well. Yeah. So he's like, right, this guy's from the ends, bro. He's got a gold tooth. Like, <laughs> how do you feel about modern footballers now? Modern day footballers dealing with a whole different kind of um, kind of vibe in respect to the social media and everything, what he's mm. got to do and how he has to tread kind of lightly with what he's saying. You've got to understand that Everybody's got an opinion on what you do. Everybody can reach you instantly and say something about how you've played or what you've got to do. And I'm not sure how I deal with the pressure of being uh, a top footballer in the current climate. It's too much pressure. What's your view about this current controversy about, you know, Sterling and Rosen and the, the appalling racist abuse they, they get, in, particularly in Eastern Europe, it must yeah. be said, <clears throat> you all for the instant walk-off, you know, just get off the pitch. Well, the thing about it is, is that, you know, we, we're still talking about instant walk-off where... Yeah. You know, how, how many years have we been talking about instant walk? Nobody walked off, but the fact is, is because the, the, the punishment in respects of black players being racially abused um, in Eastern, on the Eastern Bloc, wherever it is, and here. Yeah, oh, right? yes. Let's not yeah. Let's forget that. Change has to come from the authorities. They, they don't do enough. They don't ban... They've got closed down stadiums. You know, players shouldn't have to walk off a football pitch. They should be protected by the powers that be. A player shouldn't have to walk off a football pitch because he's on there yeah. to play. Hey, fam, they tried to mind control me with this little Babylon machine earlier, yeah, but I take them out all the time, cos. They can't hold my jangle back, cos. What is See that? him? See Mo, he's controlled by the voice, cos. See? You know the ones there, cos. You got a voice in his head? Yeah, cos. Yeah, I got a voice in my head doing his fucking work. That's what I'm doing. Whatever, bro. man. Hey, look, say something, say something, say something. Hello? Well, go on, Winston. Who's gonna say, cos? I mean, my boy Winston. There's no Winston, Winston the up there, <laughs> I want you to hear Winston's voice, yeah, and just say hello to my brother Winston. He will you want me to say hello to Winston? Yeah. Just one of them up yeah. there, just be like, hold, hold on, on, hold on. For a show. This is my... fucking going beyond the <laughs> yeah. call of duty, bro. Come on. <laughs> but you don't believe me that there's a Winston in there. I infiltrated the building and put Mandem up in there, cuz. Yeah? So, Shut yeah, up, little man. slave master. Cut. Yes, Winston. That's right! <laughs> 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 The slave master can't hold me. Yo. Yo, Winston said Liverpool's gonna win the league. <laughs> yeah, that's how you know he's fucking high then, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, Winston. I don't want to tell him that, man. <laughs> Winston's gonna mess you up. Winston's up there, man. Na, 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 na. <laughs> so, boom, like, like, like Mr. Fry, you did a little time inside as well. Yeah, I was, I was driving my cars around, but I didn't have no papers, man. Oh. It's a bad thing, I'm telling you. Don't do that. How long did you spend inside, then? Worked out to about 30 days or something. Mm. Oh, that's a calm stretch, though, man. No, no, it ain't no calm stretch when you... Nah, sleep. man. <laughs> what the fuck? You been inside? <laughs> nah. What are you talking about, calm stretch? <laughs> <laughs> Which, which the, you know the thing as well, because he's a sweet boy. You don't want to go in there, you know, bro. You don't want to go in there. <laughs> but, uh, Ian, you also had your... As a footballer, you also had your own Friday night show, didn't you? Back yeah. in the day. Mm. Yeah, I did, yeah. The yeah. right. What was that like? Right. That was wicked, man, because, like, when I first stopped... When I stopped playing, they said that they wanted me to do something um, which would kind of, like, cater to my, my personality. So this is what... When they started to do the Friday night, it's all right. It was just, like, brilliant. I thought that's what telly was going to be like all the time talking to some unbelievable people. Mm. You know what I mean? It was just like... It was and instead, you've come down to this. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like it? Would you like a chat show? I've thought about it. I have actually been offered... Or, you know, offered talks to, to do it, and, and I'm not sure I'd... I'm not sure I'd be very good at asking questions. I, I, you know, I might just... Uh, I might freeze. I don't know. I've never really done it. You've got to just flex with it, though, big man. You just... Right, let's swap places. You come over here. Come and show time. Yeah, all right. I'll ask you come questions. On. Come on. There we go. All flex, right. man. Give him your hand. Flex. Do you me? Does, you... It, does it mean I have to call you cuz? Yeah, call me cuz. <laughs> <laughs> mm. See, now, you see what I love about that? <laughs> see, as soon as you put that on, you just look... You look like... You look swaggy, innit? Yeah. So... <laughs> you look swag. Yes. Explain to this batty boy, if you could... <laughs> <laughs> Run out! There you go. Yeah. Give it. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know you ain't gonna get the chain on this. Oh, the oh, oh thank you. Cuban. Nice oh. say. Thank Look at that. Swag it. Oh, thank you. Come on. What do you think? Blink dog. Talking of, of retired footballers, you, like quite a few of them, I believe, are fond of the game of golf. I am, yeah. Yeah, yeah I love the game of golf. I you love play FIFA. It. I don't play FIFA. What? I'll I mean, smash you up. I just, you probably. <laughs> 
<laughs> you probably would. It's something that I... I can live my life for FIFA. You know, yeah. no one there. As a fat kid, FIFA's my, my world. Was <laughs> <laughs> well, you good at FIFA? Yeah, all the stuff I want to do in real life, I can do on the pad. No <laughs> <laughs> So I thought we could have a competition to see who can hit the ball the furthest. Are you up for that? Yeah, where, where's the... Cut? It's time for That's A Par. <laughs> Welcome to That's A Par. We're going to take it in turns to hit a ball as hard as we can, and then we're going to find out who hits it the furthest. So, Ian, you're up first. OK. okay. Yeah? So I'm going to get... This is the ball, guys. I'm going to place it here. Arsenal's Tiger Woods. <laughs> this jacket's restricted. <laughs> Bro, boy, man's getting taken off the jacket, oh, man. Oh, yeah. Go on, Ian. Go on. Show them. Show them this week, man. Pop! Oh, wow! Fire! That was rubbish. Where go? Into the bunker. That, that was rubbish. In the sand. A oh. hundred and... Oh, fuck. You won, bro. You dropped it. <laughs> Maybe you'll be good sorry. enough to hold my jacket. No problem. Thank you, sir. Oh, cuz, what do you mean? I'm up, cuz. I'm not a caddy, cuz. <laughs> no, you might need it. Is, is that right or left-handed? <laughs> Still got to do the job. I apologise in advance. I really, really can't do this. Hit the thing, man. Better talking, man. <laughs> Jesus! That was right. good. That was all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Hey! 43. There you are. That's where I wanted to go. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Is that on it? Am I next? I think I'm next. On the other side. Are you next, Mark? That was embarrassing. Still. Shit! Into the woods. Into the sand. Oh, you love that. Look, 104, man. Halfway. Wow. Three figures. That's what I motherfucking do, motherfucker. Okay, nasty. You're up. I'm not getting behind that. 195 to beat. I think. Uh oh. Have <laughs> 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 we got the point? This is the proper yeah, one. Okay, one more. You see how gassed he was when I exploded? Come yeah, on, bust it, cuz. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take a woods about me, cuz. <laughs> <laughs> fucking lemon, man. <laughs> You're a hater, though. I said, I'm the fucking bull, you dickhead, bro. Hit the bull, man. Yeah? Now, nah, go on. Is it really? 195 to beat. Fuck, man. I thought of most tight jeans, you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Yeah. No, that was good, though. What was that, 70? So, Ian Wright, you won. <laughs> See you after the break, where we'll be joined by Tory Lanez and Doug Khan, Quios. And don't forget to use the hashtag The Big Nasty Show. Yeah. See you in a bit. Yeah. Welcome back, welcome back. The cup is lighting up, so that's someone that's going to join us on the couch. Who's coming out of the cupboard? Thank you for coming. Well, we say, right. guys. How are you, bro? You okay? Yeah. Good to hey, see you. Keep him, you okay? Yeah. Please give it up for comedian Gus Khan and musician Tori Lanez. <laughs> Mo, can I can I just say something? Yeah. Yeah, man. You know when a brother that looks like me yeah. comes out of an entrance yeah. where there's smoke coming out. Yeah. <laughs> 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 They we, usually end up in Guantanamo Bay, brother. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> if Stan explodes to that shit, ain't got nothing to do with me. That's all I want to say. <laughs> that jacket's long, though. That looks like that jacket in Captain Hook, but there's like three people in it, bro. You know, shotgun coat still. So, what brings you out here to the UK? Um, I'm on tour right now. Um, okay. Assassination vacation tour with Drake. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, has Drake ever brought up your 10K bet? Nah, nah, we don't even talk about that. Do you want to explain the 10K bet for us, just to anyone that doesn't? Yo, so, <laughs> I was, like, 16 years old. I had $10,000. Don't ask me how I got the money. It's not <laughs> important. I put a picture up of all my favorite rappers. And, you know, Drake was the most popping at the time, of course, still even to this day. So on a, on a list, I said, yo, listen, um, I, I, I like all these rappers on this list. I, you know, I mess with all these artists. I think they're all great. But, um, Drake... I got $10,000 here right now that says, you know, you can't come to wherever I'm at, listen to my music, and dislike my music. Like, there's no possible way that you could hear my music and dislike it. If you could dislike my music 
I'll give you my last $10,000. It's all I had to my name. Yeah, bro. You know what I mean? And that's really what it was. But, you know, you look back at it later in life, it's like, what was the point of that? I could have just probably, <laughs> probably could have reached out to somebody from management or something like that, you know? <laughs> Did it in a smart way, but whatever, you know. But you were 16, you had $10,000. <laughs> I couldn't afford a fucking tip top when I was $10,000. <laughs> have you met Gus before, Nasty? Nasty, this is Gus you met before? I uh, maybe have. We have absolutely met before. Let me set the scene for you, all right? I had my three-year-old son, four years old at the time, on my shoulders, OK? Yeah, yeah. Come out of a sneaker convention. I'd just seen you, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah lovely, yeah. lovely yeah. times, lovely conversation. I was broke them times, though, bro. <laughs> So I've come out of this sneaker convention and I spot Nasty at the bottom of the stairs. I'm like, you know what? He is a funny guy, naturally funny guy. Let me go show him some love, right? So I'm running down there. I'm like, I want to take a picture with him. I want to see the vibes. I get there. I say, Nasty, bro, you're a funny geezer. Can I take a picture with you? Before he got a chance to answer, one of his entourage jumps out from the back of a skip, yeah? <laughs> jumps out like this and goes, yeah, listen, blood, yeah? If, <coughs> if you want a picture like that, yeah, we have to pay for it. <laughs> I said, OK, that's pretty standard procedure. I said, how much do I have to pay? He goes, £2.50. Oh, it's like, blah. <laughs> <laughs> what? He goes, £2.50. I was like, what are you man trying to pattern? A bus fare home? I don't understand. <laughs> and then, nasty, when we're taking the photo, right, had my son on my shoulders, remember this, yeah? Mm. He says to me, you're cuz. Cuz. You mind if I bond this in front of little man? <laughs> <laughs> to which my answer was, yeah, why not? I've got no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind if my son has amnesia, forgets A, B, C, D when he goes to the I don't mind this shit happens, doesn't it? Bro, that was our meeting, bro. <laughs> Do you remember this? <laughs> <laughs> I think he might have caught me in one of my high days. No, I'm just, I'm just floating through society. No <laughs> <laughs> was there. So what, cuz, uh, Man Like Moving is back for series two. Uh, for those who haven't seen it, um, can you tell us a little bit what it's about? Yeah, so it chronicles the, uh, the life of an inner-city Brummy lad um, who takes care of his little sister. The parents aren't around, and he's accompanied by the very talented Mr. Tez Ilias and Tolu Lope Ogomefun as uh, Nate as well. And it's just... It's a unique story, bro. It's from inner-city Birmingham. It's filmed in Birmingham, which was very important to me. You very rarely see uh, Brum represented on television, especially in a comedy format. Um, and we, had, we also filmed in Small Heath as well. So telling a working-class story, a real working-class story, in the place it was set, means a lot. And it's gone down so well, man. Is Gus based on real life? Uh, listen. I don't want to say how autobiographical it is because I don't want to go to prison, but, yeah, there's, there's <laughs> elements, OK? <laughs> there's, there's elements there, bro. Look, at the end of the day, for, for me, what's really important is when I used to watch TV that was about areas like this, whether it be London or Birmingham or whatever, I always used to, like, be able to smell the Eton writer who'd had a go at it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Sorry, Stephen. Um, <laughs> but, but I used to be able to yeah. smell like that, like, and I wanted yeah. to see the, yeah. the, the reality of it, and I think it's so important in comedy and drama, whatever it is, that working-class people, white, black and Asian, should be telling their own stories. So I'm very grateful that I've mm. had the opportunity to do that. Yeah, big ups, man. Yeah. Well, Tori, what you got coming out? You, got, you working on anything big? Um, I got an all-Spanish project coming out. It's, like, predominantly Spanish. Um, I got the Chicks Tape 5, which is, like, all R&B stuff. And then I'm going to drop, like, a real, like, all-around album. What? Hey, Mr. Wright, you released the tune as well? Well, you know, I don't like talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> but your record's not even that bad. Uh, yeah, but... It's, it's not it's... bad, but here's the record here. It's dancing, it's not... man. It's a dancing, man. It's not bad. Look, it's like, you know in place that it just goes nuts, like... Yeah. Sweet 16, bro. <laughs> Steven, you got a voice yet. Tori, you're coming out uh, tomorrow, though, too. Imagine him yeah. bringing you out <laughs> with his voice. I think you could give uh, Tori Lane's a I great know... intro when you come back. I have done that, that I do enjoy using it, but not, not musically. Or, or uh, you know, a bit of poetry... But just look down that the... camera five, and then let's say, imagine he's going to come out, you know, instead of the other two, Ah, London, are you ready? Londoners, Londoners, pull back your ears. You are about to be treated to the most remarkable sounds that have ever penetrated the ear of man. They come from the one, the only, the simply yeah, adorable Tory Lane! <laughs> 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 On everything, on everything I love, once he said, pull your ears back. <laughs> hey, Stephen, what's your favourite music? Oh, well, they have to be dead for at least 200 years, usually. <laughs> um, I, I, things, I was cursed by nature 
the universe, whatever, um, it, with having no ability to express myself musically in the form of dance. I don't Ooh. throw shapes in, in any way, <laughs> that, except that make people laugh, in, howl with derisive laughter. And, and, and I, bon, ch- I love listening bon, to music. Bon, ch- yeah. ch- bon. Well, I keep talking, I'm still put you in the... All right, yeah, I love to bon. listen to music. Bon. And listening bon. to music is... I, I get right bon. inside it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I do like that. Thank you. And I like... Um... Oh, there you are, we're joining in. Thank you. Yeah. Bon. Yeah. There we are, you see. Bon. This is all working, it's all going together. It's very good. This is what I've spent my life running away from. And it, and so I tried to avoid it. One, two, Everybody three, four! In. I'll bring you flowers! Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. That's the <laughs> See you after the break, where we'll be joined by Little Sims. Tweet us and don't forget to use the hashtag The Big Nasty Show. Big See you in a bit. Hey! <laughs> Welcome back! Welcome back to the show. The cupboard is lighting up, so that means we got a guest who's gonna join us. Let's see who's coming out of the cupboard. It's Lil Sims! Yeah. What are you saying, Lil Sims? Right. Hey, Dan, you okay? You Lovely you? to meet you. Thank Guys, you. please Hello. give up for nice rapper nice actress right. Lil Sims. Make some noise for Lil Sims. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Pleasure to meet you, mate. Big up, Sims. Congratulations on the album. Thank you. Flowers, man. Thank you. How's it going? You enjoying success and stuff? (sighs) Trying to. What's new? Um, I'm on a big nasty show. Ian Wright. Sorry, Lane. Stephen Wright. It's all mad. That's some, what's real, new. some real fucking legends on this <laughs> thing. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Are you watching Graham Norton? You pussy. That's funny. Stop on the place. Welcome to the show, though, Little Sims. How's, Thank how's, you. How has things changed for you since, you know, the success of music and stuff like that? Um, not much. I'm still still me. Still going yeah. to Tesco, get my meal deal. But you got, you got, still, some, uh... you got some big concerts coming up. You're playing Coachella. Yeah. Glastonbury. Mm-hmm. Guys, give up for that, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. That, means, that means you'll be able to move up from Tesco to Sainsbury's mm-hmm. to Waitrose, Marks and Spencer's. Yeah. yeah. And Harrods. Harrods, yeah. is that where you go? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I had my first retail job, yeah, in a place called Joe Malone, yeah? Mm. The one on Kings Road, yeah? yeah. So I, was, I used to work in a stockroom, right, with this proper geezer, a guy called Stuart. Big up, Stuart. He held my back for a lot of times. I'd be late in that. And yeah, Stuart would be like, no, he's not like, obviously, he's got problems, you know what I mean? Like, I don't like, like, like Sometimes yeah. he's pissed lift, yeah? <laughs> no, he's problems, you know what I mean? He's working-class black boy. Anyway, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> so that, he, with, I'm, like, stuck in the thing, yeah? I'm stuck in the thing in German alone. Stuart goes down, he's come down and says, like, Mo, you're not going to believe it. Ian Wright's upstairs. So this is me. I was gassed, didn't it? I ain't gonna lie. I was gassed. I was like, swear to we in here, yeah? Who made it? <laughs> I started packing, because he used to have this little basket in it. I started packing bare candles to stock. We didn't even need stock, yeah? I started packing the candles, yeah? So I had the candles like this, yeah? I walked out the door. I see Ian right in it. This is me. I was like, fuck up, people. And then, yeah? And then, and then Ian right was like, like, you know, like when someone clocks there's a black brother in the store, innit? He was like, Welcome, Benjamin. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I got into the store cream, yeah, I was like, so I walked to the door, and I was in the door, I was like, who made it? <laughs> 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 yes, I was yes, <laughs> wow. But, like, Little Sims, you got some famous fans as well. You got, like, Kendrick Lamar, like, oh. Jay-Z mm. as well. How does that feel, having, like, those kind of, like, you know, like, those fans that be, be fans of your music? To know that they know I exist is mm. mad, but if anything, it's just more fire in my belly to like want to continue doing what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> hey, loosen up, you know, This is man's TV show, you know. This is the lion of Judah on the show, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's saying I'm tight. You move in tight, system. Free the light. Let, let out the judge and just swing the. Come on, system. You get me? Swing the lion up. No, I've never, never, like never been on a talk show. I've never done TV hey, like this. Hey, think of me like, like being at your uncle's family barbecue and that. You know what I mean? You know what like, mean? He's like the uncle. TV, right? He just doesn't give a shit, innit? He just be like, yo, Patricia, you have blood clot. For no reason. <laughs> For no reason. Yeah? This is, this is your cousin, Tori. He's got 
peas. What? <laughs> All the aunties love him. <laughs> How you doing, Zari? <laughs> How you doing, auntie? Oh, he's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> then you got Guz here as well. He's like your cousin, like, he's on this thing. Look at the jacket, cuz. He's on this, yeah. he's on the roads, cuz. Right. <laughs> <on the road. laughs> you want to say I'm an Uber driver, ain't Who dropped you off? <laughs> <laughs> Same old, same. He interacts your old uncle and he just have, he drinks one, one rum. He just don't say nothing. You all right? Mm. 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 <laughs> 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 all right, everything. Uh, no, don't worry, sir. No, don't worry. Sir. And we've got Stephen, he's a godparent. He keeps at the police station. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm sat like his bell. You know what I'm You're a rich does. godparent here. You're trying to get wireless tickets? My <laughs> guy. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're going to do closing bars in a moment, so please give it up for rap and hip hop DJ Tim Westwood! One more Tim. Now, Tim, you see, like, for yourself, yeah? Like, you introduced us to a lot of, like, huge, like, mm. hip-hop artists. You know, the likes of, like, Tupac and Biggie on your show and, you know, the, the Drakes and the Jay-Zs and stuff. How does it feel, like, being a part of, like, popular culture and I'm... still being relevant in it as well? I mean, it, it feels blessed. I mean, it's been an incredible journey, you know, to meet these artists early, early on in their careers and then be part of it now. And I think now, with the UK being so big, making such great music now, yeah, it's, it's been a blessed journey. Because you met, you've met Budja Banton, innit, back in the day? Yeah, yeah, the first time around. Yeah. Swear yeah. down. I mean, I, a lot of these guys used to come up... I used to do a club up in Tottenham. So yeah. I used to bring people like Jay-Z up there and Busta and Little Kim and Notorious B.I.G. came up there. Mm. So, yeah, it was a great moment, man. Yeah, it's definitely blessed. In a minute, Unknown TD is going to be performing, but first, it's your turn. It's the end of the show, so it's time for some closing... Bars. Can we run the track, please? So, I'm um, just gonna get the mic up now. <laughs> okay. Since we go for you first, let me bring it around like this. Oh, so, you wanna start with me? God. Big Nasty, I know you love my songs. Listen. Play no games, no, you know what I'm on. Look. I just go scoop up mommy, then I go spend my money. Wait. Have a mint tea when I sit back, observe here, nigga, chat shit. Wait. Oh, you wanna talk around the subject? Troops in the back, flip. Wait. Who do you trust when the money coming in and the fame it erupts? Wait, I'm firm as a mask, got the word in my cup and your girl on my nuts. Wait, fuck the rave, man, I'm in the crib meditating, shit burning it up. Wait, Mo and Big Nasty, go ahead, go turn the shit up, go. If I see you, I don't speak. That means I don't fuck with you. I'm a boss, you're a worker, I make money moves. I made that up last night. Go on, Ian, go on, right? You're nasty, you're mo. I love the show, and if you ask me, I think the BAFTA's in the bag, bro. Please, I gotta say, look, you take to this game with ease, and so please, watching two ghetto brothers taking over showbiz. Yo, I got the mic, no hype. I'm what you like, I take flight. I'm with Nasty, and it's a party. We getting gnarly. Matter of fact, I'm black, my man's white, my man's right, and to the right, my man's looking like he getting kind of paid. I got a lot of girls, I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know why they passed me the mic right now, but I'm rapping. <laughs> I don't, I don't dance. Uh, I don't dance. Don't ask me to offer you any kind of rap. Uh, I'm not just tuneless, I'm musically crap. Uh, don't ask me to swing my hips or tap my feet. I can't move my body. I don't feel the beat. Uh, don't ask me to use words like mandem or bro, uh, but do ask me to giggle at giggle and mo. Don't ask me to rap at your upcoming gig, but do ask me to party with Mr. Nasty Big. Thank you. Yay! Come on, baby. I'm for all them South Asian uncles stuck in a chicken shop who have aspirations of being an MC. Are you ready? Where's the camera? Oh, my name is Guzzi Bear. I'd shag your nan if she was sitting over there. Oh! Mo and Nasty spit the violent verbal showers, but me, I spit the knowledge, because knowledge equals power. This life is like the Goonies, bro, there ain't no sequel. So live your life good, or treat the people equal. And don't judge the man that lives his life in sin. 
stretch out your hand to him and remind him he can win. And winning is all about pace and the massive yard. Winning is about respecting your mums and working flipping hard. So open up some books, bro, and read up all the pages. Don't worry if you struggle and it takes you flipping ages. You be like Muhammad Ali, bro. Your mind is the key. Man, be floating like a butterfly, stinging like a bee. Fuck off. Thank you to our guests, Stephen Fry, Thank you. Ian Wright, Tory Lanez, Gov Khan, Lil Sims, and Tim Westwood.